Okay. Quick, quick sure. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, searching for uh, dealer injection methods. So um, they say here that uh, you know, this method, API in a dealer, dealer, DLLs. Mm -hmm. uh, so beginning with Windows Vista, app in a DLL, so I can by default. And beginning with Windows 7, the app in a DLL infrastructure support, supports code signing. That's right. So this, this means that this uh, model won't work. It's, uh, so okay, uh, in on the page slide uh, thirty nine. Mm -hmm. So that information, yes, it is being updated after you know the like, more latest Windows version has some extra uh, registry keys. Mm -hmm. However, the, if malware has a you know, proper privilege level, I they can still go ahead and then you know, change those values. Okay. Right? Okay. Alright, and now we are moving to slide 45. Now this one is the one that uh, we are going to do the API tracing. Alright, so for this one, we want to actually use the uh, one of the tools doing API override and. API uh, tracing tool, and we are going to check how this is, you uh, know, what kind of method is used for the uh, for maneuvering. All right. Okay. Please uh, go to. And in the tools, when you go to Windows uh, tools, and there is a Windows API override 32 underscore bin. And when you go inside, there is, when you scroll it down, there is a Win API override 32. Okay, let's start. It is on the on the tools directory and win API override 32 underscore bin. Okay. And let's run this here. Attach at application startup. Please check this this box for actually this lab. But for the next lab, actually, you probably want to use, you know, this option attached to all new processes later on. But let's start with from here. Okay, please check attach and applica add application startup. And application path, you see here the searching box here. And please select, um, there's a malware class, samples, online games. And there's a number one and malware. And let's select. Okay. And you don't need to uh, select anything yet here. And do you see the uh, start button on the left upper corner? And please check and uh, click. But please do not click OK here. Please do not click. Okay. You want to. Select this in you know, a configuration first, API monitoring configuration here first. And you see this wizard uh, handle, is it a stick here? And please select. Then now you see which uh, file to monitor, right? And I'll give you the hint already. You will, go in, you will use the open process. Okay, and those open process in the uh, APIs they're dealing with the processes and the file it is located in a connector to the DLL and where we run that one and another one, NTDLL.DLL. However, it's much rarer the NTDLL, the DLL is actually being used. So for this lab, we can actually still monitor connector to that DLL. Okay, and please select connector to XP x86 okay 
Corner 32, XP, X86. Okay. And, and do you see the OK button at the bottom? Right, I only selected Corner 32, XP, X86, and there is a OK button, and I just clicked. And it asks about is system resume automatic seems not hookable? I say just say yes, right? Uh, did I say okay? Just put uh, if random uh, windows open uh, pops up, you can just say yes, and then let's go back to the original pop up. It said application malware ready to be hooked, and you know some more in, uh, text. If you see this one, once you see you have selected the monitoring, the target, and then if you see these windows, then click OK. Then you see now this malware is actually running and API calls that belongs to corner32.dlm is actually being all logged in this you know, tool. All right. So for the people who see this output, please go ahead and then you know analyze the output. On one thing that I can, uh, one thing that you can use, uh, one thing useful is when you see on the right side, and you and then do you see this you know greater greater than this uh, arrow here? When you click, then you will see much more details on your right side, lower right side here. So for every API call, you will see who called this API, what was the parameter, and what was the return value, okay? When you see this uh, menu is located on the lower panel and right side. And once you click, then you will see much more details on the right side here. Okay, if you see the same windows as I have, then you can please go ahead and then analyze the result. So for this, this exercise, for please uh, no, try to extract as much as information you can by looking at the some API calls and please look at the parameters as well. You know, you look at the uh, in very detail. So I will give you uh, 10 minutes to actually just looking at the result. Because after that, we will actually discuss, you know, what's going on actually in this you know, API calls. Okay. One start point is when you actually, sorry to keep it, uh, interrupting, but when you look at page 40, it has a API patterns, right? Please try to identify the pattern first, right? And then for each API calls, please uh, try to look at the uh, parameters and the return value. Okay, let's see. Could you show your hand? You are not familiar, not familiar with API calls at all. Okay. Okay. All right. Then first, let's start with API is a pattern searching first. Then I will explain how this API calls what I meant, right? Then, uh, okay, then we can go forward. But in order to actually search the pattern, you can uh, please pay attention to the screen. There is a this uh, search menu. You can do search, okay? Because there's you know, more than thousands of API calls, right? So this is quite why it's difficult because now there's too many information. I don't know what to look at to start with, right? But since we learned about the pattern in, on the page 40, right? Let's see. Uh, and what this tool, you need to put like a star first and say open process, process here, and then put star. Right, in the find menu, then uh, let me see. Okay, so I have much smaller resolution, so let me see if I can see the button here. There we go. Do you see at the bottom there's a find? Okay. 
Now you kind of see, do you see a little bit of pattern over there? Right? Okay. Uh, if uh, if you can, could you you know go back to the basically Win API override yeah, windows if you have different windows? But please go back now. I'm going to explain you know, what API calls and how parameter looks like. Okay, who saw the uh, the API pattern? Could you show your hands? I I identified there's some pattern that you know we talked about at the page at the slide 40. You seen it, right? You seen it? Okay. So there's some pattern API patterns is that you can find in you know, many malware. But uh, what does that mean? What is actually what is meaning, right? That's so you're gonna get into the whole details. So. Let's go back to uh, this open process. There. Okay. So, okay, good. I found, at least I, I'm sure that the uh, uh, output is slightly different from uh, mine, what you have, right? But were you able to find open process? This API call, right? And right after that, there is a virtual alloc ES, right? Then let's see, write process memory, right? Then there is a is there a get module handler? Okay, I don't see it, but it may be called, you know, either maybe a little bit before, a little bit after. Here's a pattern means they just have those pattern, but don't have to follow exactly. Okay, but still we have a good, uh, you know, I guess couple, actually four, right? Is the four that is listed at uh, on the slide forty, right? So it is, it does inject in some code to the, you know, some process, but we don't know yet which process it is actually targeting, right? So then we want to go into detail, but let's look around. Uh, uh, okay, for now, for my own benefit. I'm gonna write it down. Okay. The ID where open process was being called was a 624. Right? Now let me search if there is a get module handle. But since I I don't see it in the nearby, but it should be in the nearby. Uh, but not all the time, but there's a, a chance to to see it. Okay, good. You see? Okay, three. Let's see, let me. It's a little bit uh, far away from the open process. So let me try to check. Something, get module handle, maybe a little bit nearby. Okay. Four eighty. Okay, there is actually all right. So the last one is being called four ninety here. Okay, four at, at the four hundred ninety four. Right. So okay, there is something, but for now I will not pay attention to a lot here yet. But just I wanted to see okay, there is or not. But more important part is you know API calls nearby create remote threat for actually this particular case. So let me go. Go back to open process. So I just check what okay, maybe let's go to the main issue first. The main idea of what's going on here. Okay. Now I wanna have this one open here. So you can uh, do you know uh, compare? Okay, open process. What which one I'm am I interesting in? We're gonna be third parameter, right? So you can go back and check parameter one, two, three. Now you see the process ID here, right? So by uh, comparing this API uh, declaration and then the actual value, then you can you should be able to see the uh, answer on this uh, slide forty five. 
right? So how about this? I uh, do want you to actually digest this material, so I'll give you 10 minutes. Please uh, look, look at it, the API actually calls and compare with this you know, API declaration and then see what value actually being used. Okay, I'm going to leave it this one open. The following lab also, you know, uh, focusing on the create remote thread. So uh, please, if you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask me. All right, now I will stay, uh, explain in detail. Let's see, uh, the question to where is it maneuvering? Where would, who, who got the answer? The question number two is that where is it maneuvering? Explore? Yeah. Okay. All right. And let's see, how did you find it? Found it? I took calculator and convert the text into the decimal and then looked at the task manager to see what process had that idea. Okay, good, excellent. Yes. So that's the very uh, right way to do it basically. When you actually see so I click the open process, right? In order to check, okay which process is you know, uh, malware trying to uh, insert its own inject, uh, insert its own DLL, right? So when I actually saw here the parameter and I compare with the API the, uh, definition here, uh, API declaration or definition, which one is going to be right? Declaration. Anyway, so when you see here, we want to focus on the third parameter, process ID. And let's go to win API override. And you see here, there's a process ID, but it has an in hex value, right? But when you actually scroll it, now actually I found it here. So you, you can use the uh, calculator to convert from hex to integer, but let's see if we, if we so, uh, do you, huh? yeah, I hadn't noticed that. Right. So when you see here, so there is here when you click, oh, no, not here, where was parameter? Right. And is a, at least the, the tool actually is converting for you, which is, uh, which is it is uh, opening a process of uh, decimal value of uh, 1752, right? And let's see who has that PID, right? Processes and it has a option. It was a view, select columns, and I can select PIDs. Right, 1752. Do you see here? Explore.exe's process is 1752. All right, are we done? No, we, we, don't, we are not done yet, right? Because we don't know what kind of code is actually running, right? So let's actually go and then verify it, right? So the answer for the question two is explore the ESE process, right? And the question number three, it says, what's the path of DLL being injected, right? I don't know yet, but let's see what's going on in the next, uh, in the next uh, function call here, right? Equals virtual allow yeah, so it is allocating the memory in Explorer EX's EX process memory space, right? And let's see the parameter values here. How much? How much is allocating it? So, okay, actually, before going here, at the, we want to make sure when this virtual alloc is called, is it still actually using the process, you know, Explorer process? So let's see the return value because open process return the handle of the process, right? And where is the return value? Return value is a 11FC, right? And when you see the uh, declaration of this uh, function, looks like it's getting the first parameter is a process handle, right? Then let's go, let's uh, highlight virtual alloc and then see first parameter. FF11FC, right? So yes, it does allocate the memory into the explore, explorer's uh, process, right? After that, let's see, what are we interested in? 
size of the uh, allocated memory. So it says hex 1000, right? Do you see that the third parameter here, right? It is allocated hex 1000. And how about the return of value? Because once you once you allocate the memory, it returns the address of the memory, right? And let's see the memory value. Return value is F9000, F9000, right? So then let's look at the next uh, API call, which is write process memory, right? Let's go back here, write process memory, right? This declaration. Uh, it calls and it accepts a parameter, input parameter, process the handle and base your address you know, on where to write to, this is a destination, and it is getting the uh, source, you know, uh, buffer uh, address and then the size of the buffer. And when you go here, let's verify. Okay, handle was 11FC, right? The number is familiar, we just check. And here, it says F90000, right? That's the one just virtual all of return, right? And how about IP buffer? This is the one that we are interested in, right? But look, by looking at it, it's not clear actually what's going on. But let's see. Do you see when you uh, select right click, do you see show hex data? Do you see it? Right? That's why I know that I saw certain functionality I wasn't explaining you know, on the head, but you can always, when you use a tool, you know, look around, let's see, you know, click right, left, and right, and let's see what's there. So, so MP buffer is right, actually interesting. This is not the string, right? I don't know that what's going on, right? But let's see what's in it. You see some you know string that makes sense, right? So it is writing something, but you know there is a actually uh, it includes a path that is actually quite different from what I explained, right? What I explained is actually for you no know, basic idea, right? A create thread and a create remote thread is just accepting the start address. Don't have to be long library. However, uh, there's many cases actually start address of the load library, okay? And luckily, at least, you know, the source buffer, what it has, it actually underneath, it is a, basically a small shell code. It is, you know, it, executing some, you know, small operation then actually call the load library and use this, you know, string. But this is a spot with, with by just learning dynamic analysis, you can you cannot actually know all the you know these details. So that's why I recommend you know take, please take the x86 class and the reverse engineering, engineering class and the static analysis and model analysis class. Then you will know all the details. Okay. But for this class, let's we are just using tool and then uh, looking at some you know uh, some features we can identify easily, right? So for here now you know which DLL is actually being used, right? Okay, that's the uh, here. It was a hex. Uh, it wrote this, you know, binaries, right? Into, into F90000, which is just a memory address that is just being allocated, okay? So let's see the, how much being uh, copied. It was a hex 547, right? Hex 547. When actually, when you see the uh, buffer here, it's going to be 547. This tool is basically showing you that much of the, the buffer, which is actually written to the you know, uh, explorer's process, explorer process. Any question? OK. Then I will move on to the next uh, call, create remote thread, right? Let's go back to the uh, function de uh, definition here. Uh, the, it says create remote thread, okay? It accept process handle, right? What, which one is a, the most important part? Is a start address. When thread starts, then you want to execute all, all, uh, instruction immediately, right? 
But then the uh, star address indicated by here, which is one, two, three, fourth parameter, right? So let's look at create remote thread and let's see. Okay, it is using the explore process PID, um, uh, process handle, handle, and start our address F90000. Now you, get, now you get the point where it's starting, it just write a small piece of shell code into the explorer and it is starting at the point the memory is just being allocated and then written. Any question? Uh, usually why they are, you know, uh, you, yes, if it's a direct code injection, actually this kind of case, then you can write the entire code into the you know, small and some buffer. However, you actually writing just code, you know, you, you know, you probably heard in a, in a position independent code. So it doesn't matter where the code is being mapped, mapped it, it does, you know, you know, to have the code run is much more difficult than just developing DLL and let the you know Windows handle. Okay, I'm just having give you code, map into memory, re relocate whichever the variables or you know function name, uh, functions whichever you need. If you uh, need to be re roll it, we uh, sorry, we locate. Let the Windows handle it is easier. Right. So what that small snippet you know, uh, of code is doing is basically you know, setting up some simple operation. Then at the end, it actually just called the load library, and then code in you know, a load library that is indicated by the string. So it does it that way. Okay. So uh, let me. How about uh, actually I should have uh, make it ready. How about I want you to. Hold on a second. I'm just quick verify. Is it uh, saying uh, right, right answer? And, and yes, okay. All right. I just wanted to verify. And okay, here, excuse me. Since DLL uh, has been uh, loaded, see one thing you know later on what you can do here. Now you are very interested in what is in this in, uh, here, right? You want most likely once you learn and you know, the run learn or uh, review the x86, then you probably want to actually read this code using the disassembler, right? So in order to do that. Let's say process explore. Process explore. I probably found some somewhere here before how to dump the memory. Okay, for for this one, you see, I just open the process explorer, and you can actually create dump, and you can create the full memory dump, and later on you can open this dump 
using the wind debug and then analyze once you learn other you know, other you know, topics. Okay, but this is really limited what you can do. You know, uh, by looking at the dynamic analysis, you cannot see the, all the details of you know this uh, chart code. So, okay, just that's uh, gonna be here. Wrap up with the uh, slide forty six.